Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Taylor, and today we are going to be talking about Netflix's new miniseries, B. Hi. Hello. Hello. It's me. It's been a minute. <laughs> I'm so glad to be back with a review. I will say, as a little bit of a shameless plug, <laughs> that I just did a analytics review of just where I'm at as far as, you know, growth in the channel. And I am at the halfway mark to meeting a thousand subscribers. So I just want to ask that, you know, if you really love my videos and you like what I'm doing and you want to see more, if you could share my videos, share my channel, um, like, comment, subscribe, all of that, that would be just so helpful because I just really love doing this and I will say I did a lot of research for this video and I'm really excited to share with you guys what I came up with and just my feelings about beef in general. Beef is a A24 production and created by Lee Sung Jin, also known as Sunny, with Ali Wong and Steven Young serving as both executive producers and co-leads in this series. The story is about two people whose lives are completely upended when they let a road rage incident turn into all out war. While this premise is so simple, I think the, the gravitas and the surrealism of the show is what allows the series to explore some of these darker and just more important and humanistic themes that I think are are pretty scattered throughout this show. At this moment in time of recording, I feel like this series is kind of in a gray area in terms of appeal, especially a show of this caliber. For one, I know that the uh, critic score, the RT score is in the high 90s, but it looks like the audience score is a lot lower than I think it should be. I, I would imagine that more people would really relate to this show because I think at the end of the day it's really about the human experience so it feels weird that even though it's you know doing so well critic wise it's really only the number two show on the Netflix streaming platform and I think the first thing that was beating it out was the night agent and now I believe it's the diplomat you're probably wondering, why does this matter? And <laughs> I mean, I think that at the end of the day, it doesn't unless you really care about that work. But for me, I feel like this is kind of some of that stuff I was talking about in my Gossip Girl video. Like a lot of, you know, external decisions and consequences that occur really do affect properties of work that, you know, highlight representation, that highlight different types of original stories, you know, like, I just feel like right now we're, we're watching so many reboots, so many sequels, prequels, and spinoffs, and here we are, this original piece of work, and it, it's not being as, I think, praised and talked about like House of the Dragon is. You get what I mean? I'm sorry, what are you talking about? Now, some of this is, I don't necessarily think, the creators and a lot of the talent's fault. But we will get into that. I will say before I get into my review that there will be spoilers and there will also be some sensitive subject matters. Um, I can't really get into all the details, mostly because I don't want to re-trigger anyone that might be watching this video. I will try to put a time code somewhere in the video so that you can skip but we will be talking about the David Cho controversy if a lot of my cues wasn't really giving you an idea of what we were gonna be getting into. So, um, you're forewarned, this is your warning, um, but at the end of the day, I did love this show and I really am excited to talk about it. So let's get it! One of the biggest things that stuck out to me about Beef is that it played like a Greek tragedy and I, I'm, this is why I wish I had done like a, a White Lotus video because I felt like that series also plays like a Greek tragedy in that we have a lot of these tragic heroes that are pretty much, you know, undone by their own flaws and their hubris and unwillingness to really be introspective about 
what their actions are doing to the people around them. And I feel like Sunny really got that in this series because I feel like that is what is being on display here. When we look at Danny, who's being played by Stephen Yun, and Amy, who's being played by Ali Wong, we're seeing two different types of people, but they're also, in some degree, two sides of the same coin. And they're also dealing with life and the pressures of life. They're dealing with having to live both a collectivistic and individualistic lifestyle, which I think for a lot of POCs in America is hard. There, there's just so much here that just needs to really kind of be marinated. <laughs> I hate that I made a beef joke. No! <laughs> you done lost your damn man. The show hyperbolizes anger and uses surrealistic imagery in a way to kind of make the ludicrous seem normal. And I do like that. I think that that's something that you see in Spike Lee's work as well. This like sense of using um, absurdism and using surrealism to tell a story from a marginalized point of view. And I don't know, like some Something about it I think it's really creative I think it's really honest and it's it it really focuses on something that can't always be intellectualized and I think that's the most important part of this series and kind of what happens throughout the series is is that it's it's sometimes things that you can't always put into words and it's something that you can only truly feel. And so beef is about feeling. And feeling what? Rage. But more importantly, in my opinion, I think minority rage. Okay, so I'm sorry to interrupt our scheduled program. Hi, it's me, Editing Taylor. Um, I realize that I missed a very important part of my review. And so... I had to just come on here uh, looking the way I look just because I was like, if I don't do it, it would just it would be an incomplete review. So I really wanted to get quickly into both Stephen Young's storyline and also kind of like how that goes into Ali Wong's story. I think that there was a lot going on with his character that I feel... Um, I just felt like he was doing more. He had a lot more obstacles going on. And I think a lot of this might have to do with the fact that Danny was coming from a different socioeconomic class from Amy. Amy has this um, amazing husband who stays at home while she's working. He's also the heir of it seems like this furniture art dynasty uh, that his father established. And so, you know, she doesn't really have to go through these everyday kind of obstacles that I think Danny experiences, but she does have like her own problems that she has to overcome as far as her arc. But Danny, he has the obstacles of the everyday man by that i'm thinking about the fact that he's trying to bring his family over um and to build them a house in california he's got this plot of land that he's been really wanting to uh build on and it seems like his family has kind of started to not really trust him and it seems like he's kind of been so busy running with other people specifically his cousin um that he's not really making the decisions that are healthy for him down the line. His like everyday obstacles, his issues with getting loans, his issues with trying to find religion, but also seeing an ex that maybe you wish you had the motivation and the confidence to pursue. And now you're kind of grappling with the fact that they've moved on and that you were kind of still the same. I think that maybe because I don't watch Steven Yun in The Walking Dead, so I'm not as familiar with his performance, I've only seen him in Nope, that seeing him in this kind of role really shocked me. And maybe he won't, maybe it won't shock other people. And if it doesn't, I'm so glad because I did not realize that Steven Yun had this level of range but I think because I am kind of used to seeing uh Steven as Juniper from Nope that you know I, I just I'm I keep kind of helming a lot of 
my preconceived notions about him there. And so when I'm watching him here, it just feels like night and day, but like in the best kind of way. His issues kind of deal with that sense of duty that I was talking about. You know, I think like when you are, when you're trying to figure out what you want out of life and there's that extra pressure of, taking care of not just yourself but your family these kinds of like everyday i'm broke kind of situations become i mean exacerbated by tenfold you know and so that is what i think you see in steven's performance you see a lot of this like grit you see a lot of this not willing to give up on his dreams i will say that i i really liked that they showed him um binge eating the chicken sandwiches i know that might sound kind of weird but i think that we don't talk enough about men's relationship with food specifically disordered eating with men and that kind of binging that kind of stress binging definitely just gave me uh, kind of vibes that there was something else going on that this was his way of coping and i just i really think that both Steven and Lee Sung Jin, they just kind of came together and created a character here that was so subtle and did a lot of showing rather than telling in in the sense that like we got to know him from a very like from a very deeper level. There is a scene in one of the earlier episodes where Amy's character is talking on the phone to Danny's brother and she's expressing this like this wanting to you know sell out her company that so that she can be at home and be a full-time mom and I really found this part to be really significant here because this is one of the main driving points for Amy's character and I also think it has something to do with the executive producer and the person playing that role. I remember, I think it might have been in Baby Cobra, but Ali Wong talks about in one of her specials how she really just doesn't want to work anymore and how she just kind of feels like, you know, the American dream and feminism is over. And, and yes, she's a comedian. These are not necessarily her beliefs, but I do think that there is this sense of, pressure sometimes you know like some people aren't necessarily ambitious but they may be pressured into it because of family or because of a sense of duty and so Ali Wong's you know statements about that and I think even more so Amy's statements in the show I feel like they're very paralleled because it gets into the aspect of womanhood motherhood and kind of like where where that line is and how we're supposed to tow it. And I think this was best exemplified with the characters of Fumi and Naomi. Ashley Park, who plays Naomi, and Patty Yasutake, who plays Fumi, are amazing supporting characters. They were probably the plot lines that I think really I gravitated to the most when I wasn't looking at the Danny versus Amy feud and I really think the reason why I was so drawn to their characters is because they did serve as these foils to Amy. Naomi is this you know pedestaled at home wife who doesn't really see her partner. I don't think we actually ever see her husband the entirety of the show. If you do and I missed it, please let me know. But I really don't think we see him. And it's weird that, you know, when we do see her partnered up at this point later in the series, she's dating Jordan. And it feels kind of like if you can't get their approval, you know, get with them. And... There's, you know, I think there's something to do with Naomi's self-esteem there. Maybe there's something to do with kind of, um, you know, as Betty Friedan used to talk about the problem that had no name, this like sense of no purpose and boredom, but also wanting to be accepted and still seeking community, but not really sure how to do that in the most healthy ways. So Naomi very much showed me, I think, what Amy could be like the the negative side of what Amy is truly, you know, wanting by doing this deal with Jordan. 
And I think Fumi is kind of her foil in the sense of her relationship to her daughter, June, where this idea of using your child as an investment rather than seeing them as the person that they are and the flaws that they have and really loving them for it and kind of like what that would do to your relationship and how that would affect their relationship with their partners down the line. It, it, there's so many layers. I know that it's only what I think like 10 episodes, but I think this show really explored these things in a way that was done, you know, like universally in the like four quadrant way. Like I'm not, um, I'm not of Asian American descent, but I felt like even though I was looking at it from a black woman's lens that I still was able to relate to Amy. I was able to relate to Naomi and I was really able to relate to Fumi, even though I'm not necessarily their age group or social economic status. And I think that's like, what is the hallmarker for good storytelling is when you're able to just take characters that you would never maybe even cross paths with and then you still find a way to see the person within and and I think that that's why more shows like this need to be made because we're not seeing enough representation where people are allowed to be messy and allowed to be different and allowed to not fit this specific stereotype and it's really interesting too because I know that the creator did not want to um, make a whole thing about race in this show. He did not want that to be the focus of his storyline, but in some ways it still kind of ended up being a, like an underlining element that I think still gets talked about. So I found this amazing article by Naomi Ishisaka with the Derek. Um, I'm going to make sure to put the article in the links down below so that if you want to read it, you can. Um, it, it was an amazing read. It was great. And it was also like amazing just to have that female Asian American experience. So, you know, it gave me a little bit more insight in terms of just kind of how she interpreted the series. And while I know that like the Asian community is not a monolith, it was just really nice to see her perspective. She wrote that um, there are Asian Americans in prison who have hustled and grifted. Like Danny, there are working class Asian Americans who work hard, but barely managed to eke out a living. And yes, there are affluent Asian Americans as well, like Wong's character, Amy Lau. But even with Amy's newfound economic privilege, the deep well of unhappiness that leads to her rage-fueled beef with Danny is shaped by unresolved generational trauma, war, and displacement. Replaced feelings have a way of coming out, and the depiction of Asian Americans as incapable of rage removes the fullness of our humanity and leaves the larger society shocked and confused when that rage finds an outlet. It's also interesting that Lee Sung Jin said in Variety that he didn't want the show to focus on race, but in some ways, by not making racial conflict a central theme, he created an even more authentic depiction of the more subtle ways in which race and racism insinuate themselves in daily life. Done. <laughs> review over you get it now <laughs> this is where the surrealism and absurdity comes into play like I said you know when you have something that is ludicrous and over the top you're able to almost empathize with it faster because you're not thinking so much about logic and pragmatism and trying to make things make sense you're feeling I saw this show as that act of rebellion and that freeness to feel rage and I think it's really interesting that you know Lee Sung Jin would decide to write a story like this kind of during the wake of minority rage being more normalized in society and even being championed by high profiled people like think of the Serena Williams incident it's cathartic it makes you feel good it gets out some of that rage and that um that that inner like emotional cage that I think respectability politics kind of forces minorities in and I feel like this show I feel like the ensemble cast I feel like they got it and they showed us that they got it by delivering just such an amazing performance. Okay, so now that I've gotten my review out of the way, it's 
time to get into a little bit of the controversy around this series. Please, please, I don't have any time for any gossip now. Eh? I just want everyone to know what's <laughs> happening. For those who do not know, previously recent allegations regarding one of the actors, David Cho, who plays Danny's cousin in the series, resurfaced. Um, he participated in a podcast, and I believe it was 2014, where he made some very aggressive comments about a female massage therapist that also happened to be a black woman. I won't include the transcript of what was said. I did read it, and if you want to go look, you can go find it. But in, in my opinion, I feel like those kinds of jokes just really shouldn't be given the time of day. And so I just chose not to include it as a source in this video because I just don't want to influence people to be going and looking for it and giving this more attention. The showrunner Lee Sung Jin did release a statement to Variety saying that, quote, The story David Cho fabricated nine years ago is undeniably hurtful and extremely disturbing. We do not condone the story in any way, and we understand why this has been so upsetting and triggering. They go on to apologize for his past behavior and talk about how Cho has been seeking mental health assistance since this statement was made on the podcast. I don't necessarily know if it's enough. Um, I personally don't feel like it is, but I also do understand that it's not their fault. You know, this is the action of one that is affecting everyone else. But this is kind of where I wanted to get into outside consequences really affecting how stories get made in Hollywood. Like I said before, you're probably like, why does this matter? Why should I care? And it may not seem like something that is important on the grand scheme of things. Stories are so supposed to be how we preserve our culture as people not as, you know, one group versus another. And when people are put under fire and people have to have very significant professional consequences happen as a result of these kinds of allegations, whilst other people are still able to run a billion dollar company after making very suggestive and very equally not okay tweets, around the same time frame and if you know what I'm talking about you know what I'm talking about and that's what I'm trying to say like this this affects so much more than just this one series not maybe getting to the top one on Netflix's chart this is about people's careers being affected this is about the big wigs and Hollywood deciding what projects in the future get to be moved forward and this kind of situation can really affect that because Lee Sung Jin is now going to be taking over Eric Pearson's role as screenwriter for Marvel's The Thunderbolts and I'm pretty sure Steven Yeun is in the talks or it's at least rumored that he's going to be playing Sentry in that film so now there's two people that are about to enter Marvel right around the time that we have these Jonathan Major allegations and they're already starting to revamp the brand they're trying to they're pulling back on films the Marvels was now is now being delayed do you see how this is all kind of starting to come together it may not seem from this like microscopic point as a big deal but when you really look at how this is going to affect movies and tv shows down the line it's kind of scary and it honestly warrants the rage that i think is being discussed in beef Ooh, that was good that was good yes queen yes queen yes queen <laughs> At this point, it does not seem like the Cho allegations have really put a dent in the story, but I do think that now it is kind of hard to recommend this show to people without putting that clause in because a lot of people now are starting to be more socially conscious about the content that they consume. And that also means consuming content that doesn't have problematic talent. Now, does this fall on maybe not the talent, but the talent agencies 
shoulders as as you know regards to like who should be doing the vetting better like should it be properly should it be more respectful like what is going on here because there just seems to be an inequity of accountability and while I think that you do have to take this on a case-by-case situation that it does affect us all in the long run and I, like I said, in a lot of my videos, when I talk about stuff like this, like I don't have an answer. I don't have a solution. If anything, I'm realizing that the way that people talk about movies, we don't really talk about the business decision. That is what we should be paying attention to because we as consumers, we as, you know, participants in our capitalistic society, we to some degree have a lot more power than I think we acknowledge. I think that if you're looking at stuff and you're looking at certain content creators and you're realizing content creators that are still problematic but allowed to persist with their problematic past and then there are content creators that are literally being protested against when trying to move on there's so much there that just isn't being discussed and it does go back to racism it goes back to systemic racism it goes back to how we in a society we sign a social contract to act a certain way but that also in some degree i think suppresses our innate humanity i know that this is kind of so much bigger than just me sitting in front of my webcam and talking about this but i do hope that it opens up a conversation and I hope that it does spark people's interest into just having these kinds of talks when discussing shows and TVs that come out because I feel like you know I've been on Twitter and all I've been seeing regarding like specifically Jonathan Major is just like who's gonna recast you know people aren't even making excuses people are even doing and there's no excuses that need to be made there are no excuses that need to be made. Do not get it twisted. That is not the kind of channel that this is. We do not condone that kind of stuff. But also do not forget that we tend to live in a court of public opinion. And it's it's disingenuous to not mention that. And it's disingenuous to not talk about that. Because I do think that regardless of what is the objective truth, we're always going to be having this kind of conflict because of the direction that our society is moving in. So I know that was a lot. That was really heavy at the end. But at the end of the day, I really enjoyed this show. If you haven't seen it, I really think you should give it a, a watch. I realized that even though I said that there were going to be a lot of spoilers in this show, I don't really think I got into enough detail to like, you know, really say that. So I guess this could be a why you should be watching it styled. <laughs> why, why you should be watching it styled video. But um either way I just I think there was just so much to talk about and I really wanted to keep this video as short as possible but with as much information as possible and so there was a lot of stuff that I really had to cut out and I think I just need to do like a live stream or something where I talk about this show because I could get into it with I could get into it there's so much there do you watch beat did you like it if you did see it if you haven't seen it are you interested now in maybe checking out this Series. If so, please let me know your thoughts as well as any other thoughts that you have about beef down in the comments below. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at criticalcom with two M's TV. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Bye, everybody.